What's going on, guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital, and we're here with Greg Fanouf, VP of Finance and CFO of Grounded Lithium. It's a pleasure to have you on today. Greg, how are you doing? Doing well, Aaron. Thank you for uh, having us on the show. And uh, you're getting the second Greg here from Grounded. Uh, you've had Greg Smith before. Now you're getting Greg Fanouf. Yes, exactly. And I'm happy that we can finally get you on camera. So can you start by giving us a quick update on the company, telling us a bit more about what you've been up to? We've been uh, busy. Uh, I think as Greg Smith had articulated in previous uh, interviews with you, Aaron, on Departures Capital, busy with building a land base, busy with raising funds, busy with the awareness of the company. We're just continuing to knock off milestones in the pursuit of ultimately becoming an environmentally responsible lithium producer in Canada. So the company continues to consolidate their core area. Um, can you tell us more about that? Right. So we issued a press release this morning uh, announcing a strategic, what we call tuck-in acquisition in our core area. Um, the deal came together quite quickly with some of our friends over at uh, Ant Metals, um, as well as ROK Resources. We acquired 33 sections, or in hectare speak, that's 8,500 hectares, uh, right in our contiguous, uh, or in a contiguous core area in the Kindersley Lithium Project. Um, that transaction is a combination of cash and shares. So we're happy to have the Amp Metals and ROK Resources as shareholders are grounded. So when it comes to this transaction, can you tell us more about, you know, why you feel this is accretive for the company? Yeah, um, a lot of the lithium companies um, that we follow um, tend to be measured on what we would consider enterprise value per ton. Um, and that ton is usually supported by a National Instrument 43101 report, which we have. Um, we have a report by Spruill Associates Limited uh, giving us 3.7 million tons on our KLP, or Kindersley Lithium Project. So if you look at the enterprise value of what we currently are valued in the marketplace, we're give or take between $4 to $5 enterprise value per ton. Uh, without having a report done on these lands, we'll commission that um, as part of our ongoing efforts. But we say it's accretive because we're purchasing um, those 33 sections, which we would say are highly prospective. They're in a core area, uh, lands that we think have lots of potential. So if you look at the, the value that we ascribed and came to terms with, with um, the vendor, uh, we would say that that is sub what we are currently valued at in the marketplace. So in other words, accretive on that metric. I think also another metric that we would pay attention to, Aaron, is just um, land values. Um, you know, this, if you do the math, um, $425,000 um, on the actual overall consideration per hectare, that's about $50 per hectare. Uh, some of the more recent crown or government land sales in the area have seen prices in excess of $100 per hectare. So we think we've also done a good trade for shareholders in terms of building a more uh, larger land base, um, more contiguous, et cetera, for metrics that make sense vis-a-vis -vis where we currently are valued at by the marketplace. So I noticed that this transaction creates more of a contiguous land base in your area. Can you comment on how this impacts your development plan then? Right. Uh, we came out with a press release on February the 8th that had a well configuration um, inclusive of both producers and injector wells. And now with this acquisition that we did, uh, 33 sections, it makes it much more contiguous retweaking as we issued in our release a new bit, a bit of a revised map that moves some locations to those lands that we just acquired uh, that's done for both strategic reasons as well as operational certainly it's it's fair to say that having a contiguous land base facilitates things in terms of infrastructure you can kind of control um, things a lot more easily than you can uh, than it in a checkerboard format which a lot of our lands currently are it doesn't mean though we can't develop through a checkerboard. And that is often done in resource development. Um, you'll see from the release that we issued uh, today as well as February the 8th, we have um, some of the lands that we're gonna be developing from that aren't contiguous. Um, so that's just a matter of what you'd call boots on the ground. Um, we're active in the, in the space, in the field, uh, looking to make um, acquisitions where necessary uh, and where they're attractive to our shareholders. So. Contiguous certainly helps, but not necessarily an absolute requirement to develop. Definitely. So now let's talk about the team. So can you tell us more about your track record and evidence that the team can execute? 
Yeah, that's one that I know if Greg was here, he'd be very speaking very proudly about that. Um, it's one that we think the whole team is very proud of that we've right from day one, uh, when we started this company, you know, from a concept three, three and a half years ago to being incorporated a little more than two years ago, everything that we've stated um, to both our uh, shareholders and to the public, we've achieved. You know, we execute. It's a team that has had a history of track record of success in doing what we say we're going to do. And if history is any um, indication of, you know, future um, indications, uh, I think that's a good message to send to the investment community that we'll continue to do what we say when we say we're going to do it. Um, we take a lot of pride in that. Um, it's one that keeps us motivated each and every day and wants us to come to the office every day to um, keep knocking down those milestones. Definitely. Track record is very important for management, as we know. So let's talk about your resource base. Now, the company has increased its size and scale of their resource base. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Right. So we've commissioned two um, independent 43101 reports. Um, the first one had 2.9 million tons. Uh, we updated that as part of our um, uh, uh, finance we did in the fall of last year to 3.7 million tons done by Spruill. Um, these lands are, again, as we've been talking about here Aaron, on this on this interview, contiguous to our existing acreage. Uh, we, will, we will commission a new report as part of our preliminary economic assessment, which we'll probably talk about on this call. But there is, um, I think, very much a you know connect the dots or kind of thing that our resource base is moving directionally north of 3.7 million tons. In any kind of resource base, scale matters, size matters, and uh, we're we're certainly cognizant of that. As Greg has talked about numerous times on various interviews and in presentations, we were very focused with the land base that we have. We're very confident that that 3.7 million tons and moving upwards will be lands that can be developable, developable into a commercial project. So. Scale certainly helps. Um, we're moving in the right direction and uh, stay tuned for further developments in that regard. I look forward to covering it. So now let's talk about the exciting things. You know, Grounded Lithium is really building the foundation for future growth. Can you tell us what the marketplace should expect in the coming weeks to months? You know, what should we be excited about? Yeah, um, I would direct, um, I guess, watchers of this interview to our new presentation on our website. We've got some more detail there regarding some of the you know, upcoming news flow. Uh, we think we have a, a cadence of um, catalyst-rich news, news releases, namely regarding the technology selection. We've done a lot of work uh, with Hatch. We've disclosed that engagement with Hatch uh, late last year. We're moving towards um, providing some more certainty or clarification on which technologies together with Hatch's assistance, as well as some of our in-house expertise that we have to determine what are the two top technologies as far as direct lithium extraction or DLE. Um, so stay tuned for some, some news flow on that. Those um, selection criteria will directly go into ultimately our preliminary economic assessment, which we're on track as we've communicate, communicated previously to have that out sometime in Q2 2003, 2023, excuse me, um, which is, I think, as you look back at some other companies, um, certainly a, a basis for a re-rate and a company's valuation once you've had, had some validity or um, independent assessment of the economics of your project. So we're working hard behind the scenes on, uh, on the technology assessment. We'll continue to look at increasing our resource base where it makes sense on an accretive basis. Um, and again, just uh, keep knocking down milestones, keep executing all towards that goal, becoming eventually a commercial producer, which we're still thinking is a 2026 timeframe. Great. Well, I look forward to covering that. Hopefully we can have you back on to chat about that. And finally, where should investors and prospective shareholders go for more information on the company? So there's three points. Um, we trade on both the TSX Venture under the symbol GRD. We also have a uh, qualification or a listing on the OTCQB. And the symbol there is GRDAF. And the third spot is our website, www.groundedlithium.com. I guess the fourth one is you can always call myself or Greg. Our coordinates are listed. Um, happy to answer any questions from shareholders or prospective shareholders. Well, thank you, Greg. Best of luck. And I look forward to covering your story. Thanks a lot, Aaron. Thanks for your time. 
If you like these videos, kindly hit that subscribe button and the bell for notifications. Drop us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. And finally, always remember Departures Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you're making your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. Furthermore, this video may or may not have been sponsored by the companies that we've profiled within this video, and we may or may not own shares of any of the profiled companies in this video. If you want to know the full disclosure details, check the description down below along with thoroughly reading our disclaimer. Thanks so much for watching guys, and I look forward to seeing you in our next video. Thank <laughs> you.